for far too long. Marvel, DC, Disney, Hollywood have had control over pop culture. But now is the time. Now is the age of the iron. I mean the iron age. Now is the iron age. Now independent media has come to fruition. I should really be a voice actor, shouldn't I? Yes, thank you very much. I definitely should. But I was just thinking, I was like, you know what? What I was like watching some things on YouTube and I was like, you know, I always watch. I'm not really like <laughs> like a, a nerd in any particular sense, except that I'm like a meta nerd. So like, for example, I don't really watch a lot of movies, if any. I don't read comic books. Um, I, I love sci fi, but I'm not like heavily into any particular sci fi genre, so to speak. I mean, I, I do like Star Wars quite a bit, I guess. But I, I like more of the meta of reading and watching about these different industries. So like even beauty, the beauty industry, uh, I like watching videos about uh, different things going on, people coming out with new products and then people trying new products and seeing how they work and the drama around it. Video games, I, uh, I'm not, uh, I don't play video games, but I like watching people who talk about video games. So it's kind of weird. I like the meta of things a lot. I am getting a VR headset. So I'll be using that a lot, but a big part of that is uh, I'm kind of a workaholic. So a big part of that is I want to try using it to work, also to create content. But I like watching people who talk about VR, you know? I like watching people who talk about comics even, even though I've like barely read like two comics in my life. In fact, I have like probably four comics, um, but none of them are popular comics. I just got them one day. I went into a comic book shop and was and um, just bought like some that were on discount. And mostly it was because the artwork. I was like, oh, I just want to like because I used I did used to like read manga and was into anime quite a bit. And so I do like artwork of different styles and people and, and worlds and whatnot. By the way, these are the comics I got. Star Raiders. <laughs> Again, I got it because of how campy it kind of looked and how like old school and. Uh, I like the artwork. Screamland, again, I just got it because it looked unique and because I like the artwork. I, I have no clue. I think I, I glanced through one of these one time. I haven't actually read them. Uh, this one apparently is about jazz solo. I just, uh, I just thought it looked cool. Um, this one, again, the artwork. I was like this. So I like more, okay, it's not going in focus. I like more independent looking stuff. Um, Martha Washington goes to war. This reminded me of Tank Girl a little bit. I, I have seen the movie Tank Girl and read a little bit of the of the comic. Anyways, so I like a lot of independent stuff because the mainstream stuff like Marvel, DC, that kind of thing, doesn't really interest that me uh, me that much. I prefer I prefer anime really uh, j stuff that comes out of Japan a little bit more, although looking re-looking at these comics that I got um there's probably a lot of stuff from America that I haven't just because I haven't been in the comic book space too much so there's probably a lot of good stuff that I would like uh anyways all that to say is <laughs> I just wanted to show you those because I should probably read read through them go go through them and there's probably some good stories there all that to say is I, I like the meta of things. I like people talking about different things and learning about industries as a whole and have a general idea of what's going on. But uh, one of the things um, it, that I am into is pop culture, learning about pop culture. And uh, there seems to be going on this, this, this idea of the Iron Age that I have seen a little bit about a couple times. And really all it is, is uh, the problem is that um, for a lot of people, they just aren't that into the big boys anymore. Marvel, DC, Disney, Hollywood in general, because they've been putting out a lot of stuff that maybe technically or um, story wise or whatever isn't as good or isn't that great compared to before uh, where storylines and scripting isn't that great. And one example is recently um, the show that I just watched, which I never watch shows. Uh, Rings of Power. I totally even forgot about it. I just I just made a video of each episode 
um, a little while ago when it was when it came out. But um, yeah, it wasn't good. And so these companies, and that was uh, Amazon, it, are putting out stuff that isn't very good these days. And I've noticed it some, although I don't watch a lot of stuff, so I watch people talking about different movies and whatnot. And they talk about how like movies these days are kind of crappy in general and how there's some good ones here and there. And so that's kind of the problem is that um, uh, these companies, the, the Hollywood and, and whatnot, seem to have an, a different agenda than just creating good products um, that might be like secondary or tertiary to their other goals, which who knows what they are. It might be... Um, you know, maybe some of their goals are to are to make money, and they want to follow the crowd, the people that have money. You know, and which maybe they're trying to look at the the newer generations and go, oh, what connects with them? I got it. It's like this woke stuff. It's this, um, you know, whatever they're into these days, and and so they cater toward maybe different audiences these days. I don't know. That's probably how it works in general. Is over time. Uh, companies will try to cater towards the newer generations to pick them up early, you know, to get their get their their eyeballs early so they can make money from them whenever they start making money. So, you know, that makes sense. But uh, it seems now that part of that, their decision making isn't so based on creating quality content as much as it is other perhaps more political reasons. And so, you know, whatever. And so the solution, well, if you want to call it a solution, it's really just naturally what's been happening is that technology has been improving and uh, there's different companies and platforms that have come out over the years, which have allowed people to uh, do more independent stuff a lot easier. And so instead of, for instance, comics, instead of going through a more um, traditional approach of like working with big distributors and all that stuff, which could cost lots of money to create your work and then distribute it and whatnot. Now you can create your own work. Um, you know, you still have to create your, your, your idea and, and write it and draw it. But now there are like platforms and, and companies and whatnot that uh, cater towards independence people a lot more who, where you can create your own project, uh, put it out there for sale without even creating the actual product physically and then and then create the and then actually finish creating the project after you your money comes in right so of course i'm talking about like um crowdfunding which has been around for a while but uh, it just seems like more it's it's happening more and more now where um there's more independent people who are actually creating and even competing with the big boys such as even hollywood uh, once we look at um, Daily Wire is probably the biggest or one of the biggest independent groups of people, companies that are working to um, compete with the biggest organizations or, or industries out there right now, such as Hollywood or even the, the individual companies like Disney and whatnot. That brings me back to the Iron Age, which is basically what I just said. It's independent people rising up and um, doing their own thing to compete with pop culture, current traditional means of pop culture and traditional companies, Disney and whatnot, uh, or, you know, Marvel and DC, because they're dissatisf dissatisfied with what is coming out of those companies. And they want to make their own stuff and they want to read their own stuff. They want other people to read and watch their ideas and their projects. And so I was just watching a little bit of a video which had um, Shad from Shadiversity as well as a few other people. And uh, basically what he was, he was explaining what the Iron Age was and he said it is a decentralized movement of people that are tired of waiting for good media to happen or come back. Uh, it involves like comics gate people, independent smaller guys such as Shad uh, some of the other people include Ripaverse, which, as we'll see in a second, is the biggest one of the biggest um, things happening in this Iron Age idea. Um, Clownfish is another one that's been out that um, is a couple at least with kids. They have a, uh, a YouTube channel. Uh, Critical Drinker is another one, and then of course Daily Wire. And uh, I would include Daily Wire because they 
they're not so much like comic book stuff or nerd type stuff as they are competing with um, Hollywood in general. So I include them because they're kind of like almost on an, another level as all these other smaller guys because they're not they're not just competing against like comics or movies or TV shows or you know graphic novels or whatever. They're competing with the whole industry of Hollywood and and they want to create their own uh, Hollywood so to speak, but one that is different, one that leans because Hollywood leans heavily left, you know. And so uh, Daily Wire Daily Wire wants to has their own like conservative type of viewpoint and they want to compete. So I see no problem in that. In fact, I think it's good that there is competition. But I want to go to ironage.media, which is a website. And basically, I don't know too much about this, um, but it is a website that has a bunch of what looks like independent media and, pro and projects that are going on. And I, I wanted to read their mission statement, which says creators today uh, face unique challenges. Their access to create physically or digitally across the globe has never been greater. While institutions and industry giants increasingly produce derivative and propagandistic content, like I was saying before, um, you know, like people are not happy with Hollywood. People are not happy with what Disney's putting out these days. And you can see like the reviews of a lot of the movies coming out from these different companies and how mixed they are or negative they are. Although this should be a recipe for success. Creators struggle as those same media giants dominate across access to the average consumer. To overcome these hurdles, Iron Age Media's primary goal is to help independent creators build networks of their own and usher in a new era of creative freedom. So this is the mission of this particular group or company or website. Their mission is to highlight new indie content, connect creators and consumers, and bootstrap a new media ecosystem. And that's really what I'm interested in, again, is the meta of this of all this, is the new media ecosystem, which is, you know, comp competition to the old media ecosystem, which is the traditional channels of doing things, the traditional companies, and uh, the traditional Hollywood, traditional Disney, traditional methods of creating comic books and uh, books and whatnot. And instead, now we have come to a point where it is actually quite easy to put your content out there and to sell it. Although you still need to spend the time and the energy and potentially years becoming good at creating the content itself, to actually distribute it, once you get to that point, has become a lot easier than it was before, which I think most of us, or I shouldn't say most, a lot of us probably don't realize how hard it was in the past to distribute things versus today. And so the ways that you can um, distribute content now or sell things are through platforms such as social media. So you create a YouTube channel, you create uh, your Instagram and whatnot, and you put out content to build a following, which then you can sell other content or the same content to in different forms. So uh, Indiegogo and what was the other one? Kickstarter are basically the ways that people are um, selling their comics and their graphic novels and their books and whatnot. And you create your content and then you put it up and then you get people to buy it and then you actually create it, create it by printing it out after you've get, gotten the money. And so, you know, we all probably understand these things, how Indiegogo and Kickstarter works. But before Indiegogo and Kickstarter, um, I don't even know. I don't even know or remember what the ways were to be able to do these things. You probably have to go. You probably would have had to gone to um, some kind of distribution company and, or uh, what do you call them? Like uh, like like who who makes these uh, Dark Horse Comics? Probably would have to gone to Dark Horse Comics and try to sell them on your on their your idea of your comic book, right? And then if they didn't like it, they wouldn't um, they wouldn't buy it. This one is Blackthorn Publishing. So there's different publishing companies, and who who knows what the process there was? You know, you probably had to. It probably would have had to be a great idea. You have to sell them on the idea. But now you don't have to go through these publishers. You can go through, you can do it yourself independently, which is why this is called Indiegogo, because it's independent, right? And uh, you go on here, you put up your content. Like, um, this is Clownfishes. 
uh, Clownfish Studios. And I don't know too much about Clownfish. I've been watching their YouTube channel for several years now because, again, they talk about comics and they talk about uh, a lot about stuff about Disney. I guess they used to work with Disney. And again, I'm interested in the meta of all these things. So I like learning about these different industries. But uh, I don't, other than that, I don't know too much about Clownfish and Studios. It's like a, a, a guy and a, a woman, his wife, I guess, and then their kids. And they do like uh, video games as well. But this is their comic, and I guess they've been doing comics for a while. This is a hardcover comic, volume one, and looks like fun, looks cool. Uh, they have $92,000 already on their campaign. They have apparently two campaigns. So this is this seems to be successful, and this is they're doing it by themselves. Now, I don't know how much success they'd have if they tried going through a publisher. But the whole idea is is that they probably wouldn't have very much success going through a publisher or it would maybe cost them a lot more. It might be a slower process, whatever. They're able to just go on Indiegogo, upload their images of their project and then, you know, sell it that way all by themselves without having to go through a, a publisher or a distributor and all that. They can do it themselves. Another one is Rogue Elements, which is uh, this is by the Critical Drinker, which is also another YouTube that I watch here and there. He talks about movies and whatnot. And I didn't know until recently that he was a writer and he's written a bunch of books. So this is um, some kind of uh, Ryan Drake series. And it looks like it's some kind of mystery or action mystery or something like that. Uh, Ryan Drake, Drake is, uh, I guess he's with the government or CIA or, or something. The, these are all the books right here. So he is up to three hundred and three thousand um, dollars so that's really good <laughs> and i'm just showing you these to show how successful these um kickstarters or these these projects are right now in present time these indie projects and where things are going or what it looks like where things look like they're going Here's another one. This one's even bigger. This is by Shad, Shadiversity on YouTube, which I've also watched over the years, mostly because I, I'm kind of interested. I'm interested in fantasy and he makes um, videos about like swords and like uh, what was it like in medieval times and uh, how, you know, what weapons did they use and armies and all this stuff. So that's primarily what I was interested in as far as Shad goes. And I didn't know he was also an, a writer as well. And this is his, he's got a bunch of stuff actually. So he's got like books and gra this is his graphic novel project, which is Shadow of the Conqueror, which is based off of his books, if I'm not mistaken. So he's doing, he's got 600,000. So that's really good. <laughs> this is just one volume of his book and he's gonna have another volume later on. This is ISOM, which is the most popular recent success story of independent pop culture media sales, <laughs> I guess you want to call it. Uh, he is trying to create a competition to which all these guys are basically, um, or at least they are without, they're either trying to create competition or they are competition without stating that they're trying to compete with the likes of Marvel, DC and similar. So Ripaverse is kind of like uh, an answer to the Marvel universe, right? Or the DC universe. And he's up to um, three million, almost four million. He's, I, I guess it's over now and he's shipping, but uh, he's gotten to 3,738% of his goal, which was only 100,000. So this is a very big success story of someone who is independent, who created and over time, I'm sure he spent so much time working on his craft, his writing and um, artwork and whatnot, or at least how he wants it to look. I'm not sure who's actually drawing, if it's him or he has an artist drawing for him. I'm assuming it's an, another artist, but who knows? I don't know if he's an artist or not. I know that Shad has a famous artist drawing for him. But yeah, this is a great uh, success story right here. Again, an independent person who's doing everything all by themselves essentially you know I'm, I'm sure he has some people that he's working with uh or he's paying to do certain things but it's his project and so this is ripaverse 
Uh, and then we have, what, the Daily Wire, which is, and I'm going in order of like smallest to biggest projects or organizations or companies, which is uh, basically conservative leaning, you know, right leaning uh, Hollywood, basically, is what they're trying to be. So they have certain values and they're like, yo, dog, uh, we don't like how everything for the most part seems like it's all a certain political viewpoint or has certain um, ideas that they're putting out. We want to put out our own version of Hollywood with maybe our own ideas in it. And I don't have a problem with that. Um, how successful will it be? I don't know. I know that they are pretty successful by themselves, The Daily Wire. Uh, they have many channels, so it's kind of like a conglomerate of people who talk about mostly politics. I've watched, uh, I've watched several of their videos here and there from their different people. Ben Shapiro is the main guy. And they're bringing on more and more people, so it's like a network. It's like a YouTube network, which also has uh, their own website, which you can um, buy additional content. And so basically it's like the new media Hollywood right-leaning. Anyways, I hope they succeed a lot because I want there to be, again, more content out there. Um, I want there to be com competition to Hollywood and different viewpoints. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of shady stuff going on in Hollywood. So maybe there's going to be a Holly Hollywood number two. So that's about it. I just wanted to I just wanted to go over like an overview of the Iron Age, as it's called, and what it is, who the protagonists and antagonists, I guess you could say, are, are in it. Uh, that being uh, the biggest ones that I know of right now, which what I want to do is is uh, create a more in-depth video about all this and talk about who and maybe talk to a few of these people, too, that I think that would be really cool. So but the main people that I know of so far, Ripiverse, Shadowversity, Clownfish TV, Critical Drinker, Daily Wire. And then, of course, you have, uh, I guess we could say the antagonists it are, you know, Marvel, DC, Hollywood, Disney, HBO Max, all these different companies. And uh, that's basically it, you know? This is where things are right now. I don't, I'm not gonna say this is where it's headed because it's where we are now is like, we are in the new age of media. We have been for, for a long time, but it's, it's kind of gotten to a head now where it's so, it's so easy for people who have good content out there to put it out and to sell it. And more and more people are going to independent content on YouTube or other platforms, but primarily YouTube. And so it's kind of like those two things, like so many more people are going to YouTube and whatnot. And then it's it's become a lot easier to, to put your content out there for sale, to build a following, and then to sell it to your following, that those two things colliding are kind of creating this Iron Age, which they called it the Iron Age. I don't, I don't think I said it yet. They called it the Iron Age because I believe it has something to do with the Iron Age of comics which I don't know anything about because I'm not into comics that much, but they were referring to the idea of hard work and people were like really working on things in the Iron Age. And so that's what people are doing now with the Iron Age of pop culture, new media, independent new pop culture media. And that's what people are doing. And I don't have skills in writing or drawing or whatever. I do like writing stories. I used to write stories when I was a kid. So I was thinking about idea, ideas and it would probably be, would be something sci-fi, uh, sci fantasy type stuff. And uh, so maybe I'll make my own writings, you know, for fun. But anyways, that's all. Just wanted to talk about the Iron Age. I will be making another video about it uh, over time. I even have, you can see my notes right here. This is for this video, but um, you can see my notes the Iron Age. I'm using this app called Milanote. We got all these characters and uh, I want to like delve a little bit deeper into what they're doing and what their goals are. At least with Shadowversity, I know that he's got big goals as well as Ripiverse. But Shadowversity, Shad has actually talked about creating not just his comic, his, um, his graphic novel rather, and his books, but also he wants to create a competitor to Star Wars. The recent movies I didn't watch, like um, I watched the first one and I was like, yeah, this is just a rehash of the old movies. So it'd be cool to see something new, right? That competes with, with some of these, um, some of these IPs, I guess. That's all. So tell me what you think and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. <laughs>